All right, so for day one of our SEO class, we need to talk about a variety of basic concepts. If we look at the, uh, at the syllabus, at the very end, we have a goal of what we try to accomplish. We talk about what is SEO, the difference between PPC and organic SEO, difference between SEO and SEM, developing a long-tail keyword strategy, and researching your competition. So what I like to say about SEO I believe SEO is not compli is not difficult, but it's complicated. SEO is um, not difficult, but it's complicated. And what I mean by that is something may be complicated, but not necessarily difficult. And to me, complicated means that there's a lot of steps, a lot of things I have to take in. Uh, take, take to heart a lot of things I have to do, a lot of little steps. Each individual step might not be difficult, but there's a lot of steps, and I could easily go astray. And I think that's what SEO is. I think there's a lot of things we need to talk about, a lot of nuances and angles that we need to deal with, but in general, it's not difficult. It's just a lot of things to do. So looking through the syllabus, you see we're going to talk about a company profile. We're going to talk about a marketing strategy. We're going to talk about competitor analysis. Whereas perhaps some other SEO class is going to talk to you about make sure you've got alt text on your pictures and your keywords are in your headings. Well, that's not taking into account the other nuances about the modern state of, of SEO, the modern state of being ranked compared to our competitors. So we have a lot to talk about, which is complicated, but I don't believe all these things together are difficult. Uh, let's go ahead and open up a web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here. Open up any web browser. And let's go to the website google.com. Google has been around more than 10 years now. Probably 15 years around there. Hmm. I think they were founded in around 1998, so actually getting close to 20 years. Google's been around that long. So let's go to google.com. It's the biggest search engine at the moment. It's world known, world renowned. It's, it's a search engine. It's a tool to help us find something. So Google has been so ubiquitous that perhaps we can't take a step back and really say what it is, but Google is a search engine. It's a tool to help us find things online. It's uh, not the only search engine out there. We've mentioned a couple of others earlier on today, but we're also going to talk about the second biggest search engine, so number one engine. Uh, what's the second biggest search engine that you might have heard of? Bing. Bing. So if you didn't know about it, we're saying it now. Bing is another search engine. It's another tool to help us find things online. And it's at the moment number two. Now, I forgot to look up the exact um, market shares, but we can look that up on various websites. And approximately, Google is about 60% market share, and Bing is about 20% market share. The others uh, come from like Yahoo, so they and all have a piece. they all have a piece, yeah. Um, you drop down very quickly after these two. But after these two, you've got Yahoo, Ask.com, AltaVista, Lycos, all of these ones that are still around but don't have the same cache as before. Or reach. Now, 60%, you may have, you, you, that may be very low. You may have thought they had 100%. Everyone uses Google. No, not everyone uses Google. And so here, they had at one point probably around 80 to 85 percent market share. It's decreased. Whereas Bing, it had at one point zero percent market share, and that's got about 20 percent market share. At one point in the 90s and early 2000s, Yahoo had like 98 percent market share. Yahoo was the biggest one in the world, and it's decreased down to 10 percent, 7 percent, something. Um, and um, so we're going to talk about these two big ones, which is 80%. 
And whatever concepts we talk about here still apply to every other search engine. When you're the biggest one, you're going to influence the other ones. So if some other search engine is trying to do things in some weird, crazy way that only they do it, it's going to be suicide for them because then why would I target a 2% market share if 80%, if I do these techniques, I'll reach 80% of the market. So even though we're not going to address Yahoo directly or AltaVista directly or whatever, whatever we talk about apply to all the engines. We talk about these two because of the biggest market share. We're going to log in and use their webmaster tools and we're going to see how their screens are different, but the concepts are the same. So here on Google, we've seen it before. We've uh, Maybe you saw a year ago or so when they changed their logo and everyone was was up in arms about it. Um, everything that Google does gets a lot of attention. And so um, here, what we will do is we will do a Google search. Uh, again, I'm going to be generic. I'm not going to say, let's Google it. I'm going to say, let's search it. Let's search for it. That's what we're doing when we Google it. We search for something. Because we're also going to search on Bing. And sure, you can say, let's Bing it. You probably never heard anyone say that. So we're going to search it. We're going to search for things. Our first search activity here, go ahead and search for your name. Search for yourself as you are most commonly known or wish to be known. So if you're most commonly known as William Jefferson Clinton, you probably are going to search yourself for Bill Clinton. So search for yourself as you're most commonly known. As you are most commonly known. So I did a search for my name, like that. A bunch of results appear. You may have similar results in that how does this screen present the information, or it may be different. Now, in a nice big call out over here, in my case, I do not appear. I'm not Victor Hummus the actor. I was not born in 1935. So that's not me. I was not in the movie Scarface. <laughs> Unless I was a baby that I don't remember. But, hey, there's me right there, my picture. Hey, look, there's me, my LinkedIn profile, number one. And there, there's another one of my websites right there. And then number three is the actor. And then number four is rate my professor's profile. And number five is not my Facebook. The next one is not my Facebook either. The next one, Victor Campos Leal, is not me. I'm not, I'm not a tenor. Um, <laughs> and so forth. OperaBase.com. This is a new one. I haven't seen this person come up that much. Then there's another one that is me, actually. Victor Campos, Brand Yourself Profile. Um, quick note here. How many of you have heard of a website called BrandYourself.com? This may or may not be valuable, depending. BrandYourself.com is a reputation management website. It's one of many out there. I'll mention a couple more in a moment. But a reputation management website is exactly what it sounds like. It's a website that'll help you manage your reputation online. Because so much of, our, of us live our lives online, either directly or indirectly, consciously or subconsciously, a lot of our, a lot of our stuff shows up online. And when someone searches for your name, they may or may not find good things about you. So a reputation management site like Brand Yourself is about putting your best foot forward, putting your name, your reputation, the best version of it out there so that when people search for you, they find the best things about you. There's another one called reputation.com. There's also about.me. Does anyone know any other ones? Those are some big ones. But that's what these websites are for. I keep hearing one when I'm driving on the, when I'm driving and I'm hearing the radio. There's another one, but I it doesn't I haven't had it stick yet. There's another one that I hear about. Those are some big ones. You saw that one of the results of these ten results on Google, one of them was my brand yourself account. There are these ten slots here, and I've got like five or six or seven of them uh, compared to the other 43 million results, 42 million results. My results, one, two, three, four. Okay, I got four out of ten compared to someone else that's been in movies and, and been around longer. I'm uh, and the opera singer. 
I'm, I've got all of these results with that kind of search, and the number one result is my LinkedIn. The point of this Google search is to show Google may know things about you that you don't know you know about yourself. Because the search engines are running 24 hours a day trying to find every link of the world and categorize it and organize it when someone searches to give you results. So when someone searches Victor Campos, they might say, okay, do you mean the actor? Do you mean the teacher? Do you mean the opera singer? And here's these results that appear. So this site like Brand Yourself may not be valuable to you, but let's say I'm a realtor. My name, my brand, my reputation is highly important for, for my business. So I want to put as much of my positive stuff online when people search me. I'm thinking about hiring him for my realtor, but let's see how good he is. And they type my name, all this stuff appears, all my good stuff appears. Because these services offer free and paid services where they will help you put the best links out there, not that link about that lawsuit that you were involved in, not that link about whatever controversy happened. These will help you uh, craft your online presence. These help you craft your online presence. Some free methods or via some free methods and some paid methods. I personally haven't engaged in the paid methods of these sites, the free ones that work pretty well. Notice one of the results was that profile. I've taken up one of those slots and pushed away other slots that could have been negative to me with a positive result. The reason why this might not matter to you is let's say you're a company, you're a person in a big company. Let's say I'm an employee over at Qualcomm. I'm one of thousands that works there, and one person is not really the face of that company. So it might not be so valuable for me that I'm that I'm doing this reputation management if I'm such if I'm part of such a big company. I don't know. It depends. But I just brought this up because it did pop up on mine, and it's something to think about, to look into, especially the free aspects if you think it's valuable for you. So this Google search result gives all of these results. Maybe there's pictures, maybe there's this call-out box over here that really focuses on the more famous Victor Campos. Then there's suggestions. Do you mean Victor Campos actor, Victor Campos on the West Wing, the Facebook, the attorney, the doctor Victor Campos, the DJ Victor Campos, the doctor DJ Victor Campos? One of these. There's suggestions. Uh, we will see that these are valuable as we start to craft a keyword strategy later on. We'll see what all of that means later on, of course. And in the results, in my case, I see a part that also has ads. These are marked with a little green ad. Just a few months ago, these used to be marked in yellow. Now they're green. We'll see that the search engines change things, even subtle things like the size of the font. A few years ago, the font on a Google search was smaller. Now it's larger, and we'll see how that could affect you positively or negatively. Another thing that if you've been using Google for a while, something's different. Does anyone remember if you've been using Google for a while from here? Something's different. How do I know what the best result is in here? It's number one on the list. But wait a minute, there's no more numbers. Remember there used to be numbers on these results? So things change. Is it good or bad? Well, it depends on a variety of factors, but the more we know these things, the more we could take advantage and craft an SEO strategy that helps you. I'm going to open now a different web browser. You can open another web browser or another tab or another window. And now we'll go check out the competitor website, bing.com. Let's go check out the Bing search engine. Go to bing, b-i-n-g.com. bing.com. Bing is another search engine, but right away it's very different in that there's some sort of picture of the day. Sometimes it's animated. There's going to be headlines. 
at the bottom here that might interest you. It's customizable. Um, but still, it's a search engine. There's a box here for you to type a search result, or a search query, that is. Search for your name the same way that you searched in Google, now search in Bing. If you start getting suggestions, just ignore them and then just search for yourself. Obviously, this would be what you might have heard as Googling yourself. You're being yourself, so you're just searching yourself. Google says I get 42 million results. Bing says I get 4 million results. Well, which of those two is better? Am I, am I going to look on page 7 of Google or Bing? Am I going to look on page 3? So who cares if Google gave me 42 million results? Bing and Google are both searching the same internet. But Bing believes its results are better. It believes that out of these four and a half million, you'll probably find the one you're looking for. Whereas Google says, out of these 42 million, you'll probably find the one you're looking for. They're both right, they're both wrong. If you clicked on the thing that you are looking for, it was right. If you're not finding what you were looking for, then it was wrong. So it doesn't matter that one had more results than the other. Did you find what you were looking for? So here then I'm getting all of these results and the page looks a little bit different. I'm getting these images not at the very top, I'm getting the images a little bit lower. At the very top, the first result, Bing, is showing the actor. And then the second result is Facebook, which is all the Victor campuses on Facebook. Then it's showing the TV guide. Then it's showing my results. So I'm fourth on Bing, whereas I'm number one on Google. Now, Bing is also showing this result a little bit different. It's showing my job title and connections and such. Google didn't. Google just said, here's his LinkedIn. Oh, actually, it does. It does say something here, although it's subtle. I didn't even notice it. It is saying here, Greater San Diego Area, etc. Whereas Google makes it more obvious. Director of Technology, Internet, 88 Connections. Same results. Bing and, Bing and Google both saw my LinkedIn profile, but they're both presenting it in a slightly different way and position. So what we'll say here is each search engine has its own algorithm to determine results. They both surf the same web sites of the world Each believes its results are the best. It's their algorithm. It's their trade secrets. It's their proprietary software that scans and analyzes the internet and gives you results. And at the moment, Yahoo is borrowing Google and Bing's algorithm. They've paid to use their algorithm. So as we optimize for Google and Bing, we're already then optimizing for Yahoo to some degree. That's why we're not really going to focus too much on the exact Yahoo webmaster tools and such, because Yahoo's already getting results from the others. It had first its own algorithm, which worked in the 90s and such, and then the Google algorithm came out and blew everyone away, and it became number one. And then Bing came out and said, well, we need our own search engine, and so its own algorithm, and it's been increasing in market share, as I've said, and then Yahoo's been decreasing, and they said, well, we, before we become completely irrelevant, let's team up with Bing and borrow some of their algorithm to give results. And that worked for a bit. It stopped their decline. And then now, most recently, within the past three months, I think, six months, now they've got a contract. Yahoo's got a contract with both Google and Bing to, search, to show results. So as we optimize for the two big ones, we're optimizing for the three big ones. This one is showing results over for videos. Google didn't show videos. And if you didn't know, Google owns YouTube. So I didn't get any YouTube results anyway. Over on Google, I got them on Bing. None of these matter in this search, but here's some re video results. The results here seem to skew much more toward the actor. 
uh, there's really only one result of mine, it's my LinkedIn, but every other result pretty much is the actor. So the algorithm believes when people search Victor Campos, they're probably searching the actor. Whereas Google was a little bit more leaning towards me, but still showing the actor, the, the, the doctor, uh, you know, the opera singer, etc. There's recommendations, there's ads, I see some ads here, this one's marked as an, as an ad as well over here, although slightly differently, the, the little ad signifier here is a little different, it doesn't stand out as much as over on, on Google. And it's recommending, what about searching Victor the actor, the attorney, in Santa Cruz, Names. So, different results. How many of you found a result on Bing that you didn't find in Google? A few people. Okay. So, that's why it's valuable for us to think about optimizing for both. Uh, let's go back to Google and we'll do another search. This time, let's, if you've got a company, let's search for the name of your company. Search for just very basically the name of your company. If you know any of these tricks and such, don't worry about any of that yet. We'll talk about it. But I'm just going to search for the name of my company as it's supposed to be spelled. If it gives you suggestions and such, just ignore them for the moment. Just simply search the name of your company, not the web address, just the name of your company. I'm going to do that search on both engines in a moment, but I'm going to see where the Google results. Google gave me 268,000 results. And look at that, I'm number one on Google. I must have amazing SEO, right? This is a trick question. If a person is searching for the, my company name, of course it's going to be number one. But they would most likely really be searching for what my company does. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that search in a moment. I'm showing you this search as an example of SEM search engine marketing. What else are you doing outside your website? What else do the search engines know about you besides your website? Number one, it knows my website exists. Last updated with a little blurb. We can see that we can edit all of this stuff. But it also sees there's their Facebook, there's their Yelp, there's their Twitter, the LinkedIn, the company LinkedIn, one of their apps, one of their videos. Over on MapQuest, um, so it looks like eight out of these results are our company. Then there's the PMD Interactive Stock Chart. That's not us. We're not. We're not Psychomedics Corporation. That's not us. And then there's over here something else. Uh, that same tech company or, or or psychometrics, whatever that company is. These two results are not our company, but 8 out of 10 are our company. And if I go next, 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 I'm sure it's going to show more stuff about our company and competitors and such. But here I'm showing you what does Google know about my company. Let's compare then. Again, search your company the same way on Bing. Bing is presenting results in a different way. Here, that's a Google result. Here's a Bing result. Number one result, big and bold and really nice looking. Look at that. Over here, then a map to the location. Um, the number one result is our home page. But look, that also notice that also Bing is showing deep links. Bing is showing links within our website. You want to go check out their blog? Here it is. You want to go check out photography examples? Here it is. Google didn't do that. Google just said, here's the home page. I scroll down and it further takes one of these slots up for our services. Go check out the services that this company offers. There's the Yelp review. Google gave the Yelp review also, but Bing gave it slightly differently. Notice it has the phone number and all of that prominently. There's our Facebook, the LinkedIn, Google+. That's another thing that's interesting. If you haven't heard of Google+, it's another social network, just like Facebook, Twitter, etc. Google has their own. It's called Google+. 
I like it, and we talk about it, and we use it in the other class. But it's interesting that Bing showed a Google Plus result, and Google didn't, even if it's even though it's their own network. Also, our YouTube is there pretty prominently. <coughs> and then that other PMD company. So this one's got 9 out of 10 results are our company, and these deep links, and a nice map. Bing, for free, did all of this. This was not paid at all. Bing, Bing's algorithm gave this these results. Yes? So you didn't have to do anything for you to get these sub-things? Exactly. These things we did not ask Bing to set them up and we did not do any special coding or anything. We just created the site, the different sections, and put content there, and Bing then said, these are valuable, let's show them to people. Mine doesn't do that. It shows my website, but then it shows separate ones. Yeah, that's fine. It's going to depend on various factors. Um, we're going to see that sort of like SEO is like a snowball. It can get bigger and bigger. And so perhaps you haven't grown your snowball yet. And exactly. <laughs> yes. So Bing doesn't have, or Google doesn't have very much to go on yet. So it doesn't show very much. But as we work for positive SEO, we will get more positive results. It snowballs. All right, so search your company name to get a sense of how the search engines, I'll just call them SEs, the search engines, uh, see your company. A it's a glimpse of your SEM, search engine market. What are you doing outside of your site? There's a deeper definition of that, of course, which we'll get to. But in short, what are you doing outside of your site? We've got a Twitter. We've got a Yelp. We've got a LinkedIn. We've got stuff, not just our website. Because a few years ago, the question was, do you have a website? Now it's, what's your Twitter? What's your LinkedIn? So the website now is a given. The website is the minimal thing nowadays, where a few years ago, that's very cool, you had a website. But now that's the minimum thing, because you can make websites much easier than before. Now the thing is, what's your social media? What's your online presence? Are you on Snapchat? Do you have an app? Do you do videos and blogs and video blogs and all of that? That's SEM. What, how are you marketing <coughs> your site? Marketing. What's another definition or, or synonym for marketing? Advertising. You hear advertising, you might think right away, pay for advertising? Yes and no. You can use Twitter for free and reach an audience. You can use Facebook for free and reach an audience. But guess what? If you pay a little bit to Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest, whatever, you reach more of an audience. That's why you see those video ads on YouTube. Someone paid to reach more people. That's why you might see those promoted pins on Pinterest. Someone paid to reach more people. And maybe you personally take that as an, as an affront and will never click on an ad, but there's millions, hundreds of millions of people that won't take that negatively and see that actually that tweet really speaks to me, and I really need to get un uh, in touch with that company, so I'll click that tweet that you paid for to reach more people. Maybe just to pick a number, you paid $50 to reach more people, and that $50 tweet then resulted in a $200 sale. Was it worth it? Yeah. Was that $50 tweet resulting in a phone call and maybe a follow-up? Was it worth it? You have to decide these things. So SEM is what are you doing outside your website? It's are you are you advertising? Are you promoting? Are you reaching more of an audience besides your website? Because unfortunately, no. If you build it, they will not come. If you build it and advertise it, they will come. Make a note that some of the results that I've been seeing here have rating or reviews. Yours, yours may not come up here, but make a note here. Uh, very important nowadays 
review websites such as Yelp. People can give you reviews on Facebook, Google Local, Bing Local, I forget what it's called exactly, um, Angie's List, TripAdvisor, there's a bunch of them out there, these are a few off the top of my head. Do you know of any other websites out there where people can review things? It doesn't matter what, but any place, yes, Yelp, Yelp yep, got that up here, number one. Uh, any other ones? Facebook, Yelp, all of these. There's plenty of them to talk about. Some of them are very s focused on a particular niche. TripAdvisor, for example, is very valuable for people that have a restaurant or a hotel. You know, I need to I need to look up. I'm visiting San Diego. I'm coming from Portland, and I need to visit San Diego. What's good in the area? I'll go to TripAdvisor. It's an up and coming site like Yelp where people can review, but the focus is on people from outside giving their opinions when they're visiting. Yelp has that, of course, and it's the biggest one. Facebook, because it's the biggest social network, has a version of that too. But Yelp, I think, still is the biggest one. Perhaps in order, it might be better to list them like this. What's that? Well, Twitter can be used to, for it to some degree, but I'm looking more for a website where people can give like quick star ratings and reviews. I can go look that up on Twitter. People can review you positively or negatively, but those tweets disappear quickly because there's so many tweets out there. So these could stick around longer. And um, review websites uh, are becoming more valuable for ranking. Do you also have people telling other people they are good or they are bad? Hopefully they're good. And if you're getting those reviews, even bad ones could have a value, which I'll explain in a moment. But if you're getting reviews on Yelp and they're good, that could help you. There's that snowball. You start to snowball and get larger in that you have a website and then I set up a Yelp and then I'm asking my customers to review me and they give me positive reviews and that's starting to appear here and giving people a good sense of security that says, well, they seem to know what they're doing. Maybe I do want to hire them. People say they're good. I'll give them a shot. So review sites are a modern aspect of ranking, SEO, SEM. There's, we're going to see that there's so many ways to do things that it can be overwhelming. So I try to mention if, if you have only time or budget for one, I'll, I'll try to mention that. So here, if you have only time or budget for one of these, it's Yelp. Get on Yelp, claim your business on Yelp, create your business. Even if you did not create your business on Yelp, possibly someone else did. Probably someone else did. Anyone can create a listing on Yelp, especially someone that's really mad about the service they got, so they can tell the world about it. So review, good reviews are good. Bad reviews are good. Obviously good reviews are good because it's telling people you're a good company, you're trustworthy, you've got a good product, good sales, whatever. You're getting all that positivity and it's building upon itself. Well, the reason that bad reviews can also be good, even though obviously on the surface that sounds very bad that someone's trashing you, bad reviews are good because they can be turned to good reviews. Let's take a little tangent right here. Let's talk about this. How to use review sites effectively. Thank people for their good reviews. Once a month or once a quarter, or whatever you'd like, you want to check your Yelp. And if people are writing good things, you want to reply and say thank you for that. We strive to have the best product, blah, 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 come again. We want to be positive because that will be, you can do, you can do this private or publicly, but I'm going to say you're going to do it publicly. You're going to reply to people publicly, publicly, 
you're going to put out your positive uh, replies to people because that's going to show potential customers this company likes their customers this company treats their customers right this company is active it's not a faceless company it's not a faceless corporation that just exists to take my money they're open they're talking to their customers they're praising their customers everyone likes praise so you're showing people that you care that you're a good company for their good reviews let's back up here this should be step zero claim your business on the review sites that's step zero this assumed you had a profile on Yelp and again you don't need to create it yourself someone else might have done it so you need to go to the process that's out of the scope of our class but you need to go to Yelp you need to figure out how do I go and claim my business it's usually a process of getting a, a phone call from Yelp or a business or a postcard from Yelp to confirm you're the real owner this is how you prevent someone stealing your position on Yelp this is how you are prevented from stealing someone else's Yelp you have to claim your business then when you have that access you are able to go in and log in and reply to people post your latest hours fix those mistakes that people are are updating saying no we do have parking and all of that so are you gonna let people define your business or are you gonna define your business you're gonna claim your business to do that for bad reviews answer them do not bribe <laughs> what I mean by this let's say I've got a restaurant and I'm pretty new and when you're a new restaurant or a new business Yelp reviews are very very important because that again creates a perception and that snowballs and that could be a positive thing or a negative thing maybe you have great food but you had one person that had one bad experience and they take it out on you on Yelp someone else sees that Yelp and they say why would I try them out they got one star so Yelp can have a lot of sway on things not just restaurants but lawyers and realtors and bakeries and web designers you saw our web design company has a Yelp everyone's got a Yelp that nail salon has a Yelp everyone's got a Yelp you may or may not have one if you do have one you can use it to your advantage. The bad ones, the bad ones are bad. The bad ones suck. The bad ones hurt. But here's how you deal with them. You're not going to bribe the people to say, we're so sorry, please try again. Here's a free dessert. You're not going to say, we're so sorry you had a bad experience. 10% off your next bill. That's bribing them. You're not going to give anything in return for them to try again or to maybe give a better review. Because unfortunately, people take advantage of Yelp by giving bad reviews to places they've never been to to trick people into getting something free. So some unscrupulous Yelper could have said that I had a terrible time at your place and uh, you know I found a bone in my sandwich and uh, I almost broke a tooth. So then I'm scared and I run to my Yelp and, and say we're so sorry uh, you know your next sandwich is on the house just let our server know. You just gave away a free sandwich from someone that never stepped foot in your restaurant. So for these bad reviews, you're going to answer them, but you're not going to bribe. You're going to do something like be positive, acknowledge the mistake or the problem, vow to do better, invite a second chance. Again, yeah, you should say it one more time. Don't bribe. Don't give something for free. Don't say you're gonna you're gonna get this 10% off. You're not, you're gonna get a free dessert. You're not gonna do any of that because they could just be gaming you. Maybe it is a legitimate person, but still, you never know. You don't want to open yourself up to that. Yes. Invite a second chance. Oops, chance. Invite a second chance. Whatever you're going to write, you're going to say, you know, we're so sorry, the waiter had a bad time that night, we've spoken with them, they're going to be better about it, give us another chance to come back, we'll see how our service is, number one. Okay. You know, some sort of thing like that. Don't say, we're so sorry, then come back and ask our waiter for a free dessert. <coughs> also, we'll say here, reply publicly. 
you have a chance to reply um, publicly. You have a chance to reply to people privately or publicly on Yelp. You might think this this is damage control. Someone wrote something terrible. I got to get back to them right away to fix this, and it may. Um, you may be tempted to reply in, in private between us. Let's figure it out between us. We don't want to air that dirty laundry. You still want to do it publicly that you're trying to smooth this stuff out because it shows the other people that might visit your business, this company cares. They're trying to fix it. They're not bribing. They're not begging. They're trying to fix it. So do it publicly, obviously, think in terms about everyone's going to see this. So that's why you're not going to be bribing, you're not going to be begging, you're not going to be, you know, trying to <coughs> fix this in a way that could hurt you later. And this requires, you know, more nuances and such, but again, it's a little out of our scope, <coughs> but that's as much as I can say at this point, something to think about if you've never thought about these review sites. Yelp, or Facebook, or Google Local, and all of that, something to think about. Claim your business. It's free. Check it once a month. Set it to an alert so when something happens, get that notification. And then deal with the results. The bad ones, of course, but the good ones. People forget that. People forget to, to be thankful for the good reviews. And again, on those good reviews, you're not going to say, thank you so much. Don't forget to invite your family. Here's 10% off. No, you're just in, you're also still going to say, thank you for your great experience. We hope you, you tell your friends about us and we will continue to be the best. Uh, you know, family lawyer around. Moving on, any questions then on review sites? Let's uh, do one more search, then we'll take a break. We've been searching for your name. We've been searching for the name of your company. Well, now let's search how most likely people are going to search for you. PMD Interactive. One of the things we do is web design. So search for one topic of your website. Search for one thing that your website does or is known for or you want it to be known for. So I'm going to search for web design. And again, if you know any advanced tricks, don't worry about them just yet. I'm simply going to search for the basic keyword, the basic topic. I won't put in a location or any such tricks yet. I'm just, I'm just going to search web design in both in both engines. Ignore any suggestions. Over on Google, web design gave me a result of 335 million possibilities. I get all of these results. I get a cool map. In my case, some pictures, other stuff. Bing gave me also... Bing gave me 1.1 billion results. All of these results, maps, links, reviews, etc. Number one result, techlius.com. They're the best of the best, right? They're marked as an ad. Maybe they're the best of the best. They certainly paid enough to be number one. Notice they don't put numbers here anymore like they used to. So you may be savvy and notice the ad and say, I'll never click on an ad. They paid for it and they cheated. Other people might not see that, might not care. So that is a number one result for some people. So techlius.com, San Diego Web Design, award-winning web design company. Oh, award-winning. That sounds even better. Let me click. Well, I'm going to skip these ads. I'm going to skip this map for a moment. Then I'm going to go over here. JacobTyler.com. This is our first organic result. We have paid results and we have organic results. When you search, you get paid results. You get organic results. Paid, paying some amount of money on a regular basis to rank well. 
organic results, non-paid results. <coughs> this class is all about the organic results. This class is all about what do you need to do on your website and off your website to rank well for free. I'm not saying at all that the paid results are cheating or, 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 or a dirty word or anything like that. You may personally never click on an ad. Lots and lots of people will, either unknowingly or not caring, or it, you know it's fine. So you have to think about that. Because it could be valuable if you're first starting off to engage in both. To do the organic stuff we'll be talking about, and to set aside a budget of $20, let's say, to help you rank. Because you can get great results with pretty small budgets, you know, a couple of lattes, a week's worth of lattes, why not instead take that and spend it towards some Google AdWords or some Bing AdWords and see how going without coffee for a week resulted in two sales or three phone calls or something. Obviously, the more you pay, the more you reach, longer and all of that. So Google and Bing will gladly take $1,000 from you to reach even more people. Who knows, just by looking on this screen, how much did San Diego Web Design pay? But they're number one, quote unquote. And the thing about paid result is that it's like an ever, it's, it's a never ending arms race. In that, let's say I pay $100 to be number one on Google or Bing, and I, it's getting me good results. Then my competitor down the street pays $110. Now they're number one, and I'm number two. So okay, I pay $130, I'm number one, they're number two. Then they come back a month later, they pay $200. Okay, now I'm going to have to pay $210. And then let's say the next competitor comes and they pay $500. So that's one possibility of this stuff, that someone just pays more. They bid more on the results and they get them. These companies will gladly take your money just like the, just like the, the phone book gladly took your money to put your full page ad next to your competitor that only paid for the quarter size. So at the moment, these results, I know that I've heard of Wix.com much more. I've seen commercials about them on TV, but they're number two. So for whatever reason, Techlius, which I've never heard of until today, has paid more at the moment to rank number one. Maybe they, maybe they spent $100 and they blew that budget in two days and I happen to look at it, and I need a website, they're number one, and I pay for them, and that pays itself back. And we've got WebsiteBuilderTop10.com, Web.com. This is also a good example to mention about the name of your website. Let's see here. Think about organic and PPC, pay-per-click, paid results. Think about organic and PPC SEO as you create an online presence. And I say online presence instead of simply website because you could be building up your Instagram, you could be building up your Yelp, you could be building up your Facebook, it's your online presence, your, your eBay, as you create an online presence. Think about uh, a little bit of paid uh, advertising, because in the real world, if I'm a real business, a restaurant on Main Street, there are some people that are going to be wandering around, see my storefront, and walk in. There are people that are going to have, uh, I'm going to get some customers from word of mouth. Someone came, told their friends, then they came next week. Okay, that's only going to get me so far. People that walk in front of my business and people that do word of mouth. I most likely have to perhaps take out an ad on the paper, or put an ad on the radio, or put a billboard on the road, or get a person to to twirl a sign on the corner. All of that is marketing. All of that is advertising in the real world. And all of that is not free. So in the digital world, why is it such a bad thing to pay for it once in a while? Because we will be talking about the, the 
the free stuff, but, uh, but the free stuff is the difficult way, the long road. And it's okay to take a shortcut once in a while if it's in your budget. And again, these budgets can be very, very affordable. 20 bucks, 10 bucks, 200 bucks. If it's in your budget, go for it. If you need quick results, go for it. We don't really talk about paid results here because that's a different beast. We're talking organic. What I was about to say about website names. Your domain name, your URL, your address, might not matter. In the old days, I needed to have the website sandiowebdesign.com. In the old days, I needed affordablebabystrollers.net. I needed that domain name because it had those keywords that people would be searching for. I need an affordable stroller. I type on Yahoo, affordable stroller, and I get affordablestroller.com. That was the old days. Your domain name might not matter anymore. EMDs, which are exact match domains, have been abused and are less valuable, valuable than before. So an exact match domain, right? San Diego Web Design dot com. Um, vegan friendly san diego bakery dot net or dot biz whatever i want to attract to my bakery vegans i sell vegan friendly baked goods i'm in san diego i'll put all those keywords in my title you and the spammers you and these spam companies that are trying to rip people off um with faulty products shoddy products or you know fly-by-night organizations that you pay them and then you never get your product. Because anyone can make a website, any legitimate or illegitimate business. And because there have been so many, such a glut of domain names with the exact match keywords that people search for, the search engines just throw up their hands and say, these are less valuable. Our stats show that more and more of these websites that have an exact match domain are spam. And unfortunately, that's bad for us because I just spent 20 bucks in buying vegan friendly San Diego Now, I'm not saying it's going to automatically be detrimental, but from the data that I see and the documentation that I read, this is not as valuable or important anymore, and you should see it here as well in our results. Techlius.com. What's a Techlius? Wix.com. What's a Wix? Website Builder Top 10. Okay. That one's sounding spammy, but they're number three because they paid for it. Web.com. Web.com in the old days, that would have been number one. That's the perfect website. A website about websites called Web.com? Amazing. But now it's number four, and they have to pay for it. Skip this and go to the organic. Jacob Tyler. Jacob Tyler, are they a web designer, a fashion designer, an architect, a doctor? Doesn't matter. Through their organic optimization, they're number one on the regular results. Further with top web design and San Diego branding agency title and their description, San Diego web design branding agency and marketing firm providing web design, social media, graphic design, and print collateral to grow your business. Because of those ancillary things, not just the domain name, they're number one on organic results. BOP design. Again, web design, fashion design, graphic design, images. Then there's an article from Wikipedia. One of the valuable top 10 slots is taken by the definition of web design. News articles. Sign up Genius wins top honors for web design. An article about you need to read this before hiring a web designer. Updated 17 hours ago. Yelp reviews of web design companies in San Diego. Here's another real company. This is like the seventh slot. Tinyfrog.com. Again, oh, they're a nature tour company or something. No, they're a web design company. Tiny thought, their name doesn't matter. Because before you heard about it, what the heck is a Facebook? Before you heard about it, what the heck is a Google? Before you heard about it, what's a Flickr? What's a Bing? What's a PMD Interactive? Before you 
know what these things are, you, you, you don't know what they are, and you have to build an online presence. They've engaged in SEO to be on page one. They're not number one, page one. It's very hard to do, depending on your competition and who else is paying. But Tiny Frog is number one on a regular result. Some amount of people are going to see this one and click. Some are going to skip. Some are going to see this, which I'll mention what this is in a moment, and skip this and say, this is an ad, so I'll skip that. And then they're looking around, Tiny Frog, that sounds funny, and I read what they're about. Let me click at least. And they might get a sale. Ashwood Studio. Here's another one that is a real company. Here's like one of these other review sites. Review sites, ranking websites, those are taking up the slots. These 10 valuable slots. So much competition. This is what I said earlier. Or get yourself an education in web design at Platt to do it yourself. Yes? So you're saying that it doesn't matter what your name is anymore and that you should just make a, a, a name and not try to tell what your business is in your name. Yes. So using everything using everything else we'll talk about what the course is about optimize your site regardless of your name if you're uh, if you're barely going to make your website or if you're soon going to make your website and you go search what other names available I really need this name. It's been in our family business for 20 years. I just thought about getting online this year, but we've had our business for 20 years. And I want that name, Victor's Bakery. We've had it in our family 20 years. And if I try to go buy Victor's Bakery, it was taken. It was bought 10 years ago. Um, well, I'm going to try to do the original Victor's Bakery. Whoops, that one's taken. So I'm going to do number one best Victor's Bakery, whatever. No, don't try to get that one there. It's unfortunate that you, that you can't get your name exactly as your business card has it and such, but <coughs> any name, really, any name will work as long as you do all of the other techniques we'll be talking about for optimization. Yes? Do meta tags have anything to do with uh, traffic? Yes, part of, uh, we'll see in detail, this description that pops up here that has some of the keywords that I searched for, this is a meta tag, uh, meta description technically, but these things, we'll look at all of these different things that we need to do to help us get found. This is the meta title, the meta description, meta tags themselves are not as, meta keywords themselves are not as valuable as we'll see, but all of these things that we're going to talk about are important. So all together this helps us. In the old days it was just get the perfect name and that'll help. So here are a lot of competition quick look over on Bing. Number one result, Wix. They, they're number one on Wix, which they paid for. There's the ad. Art Institute. Learn yourself some web design. Platt is right there, higher up than Google. So education on, on web design. On the right side, top 10 web design. There's website builder top 10.com. They're number one on the sidebar. One in one web design. Higher top web designers. That's upworks.com how to design a website. Not really a complete sentence, but they'll take your money regardless. Um, results on a map. First organic result is webdesign.org, which is tutorials for you to do it yourself. First real result of a real company on Bing, Bop Design. Google Webmaster Tools, there's Tiny Frog, Jacob Tyler. He's like number four on Bing. Still, still on page one though. There's Wix again. They're here organically and paid. Is that a waste of money? No, because if they make sales, it pays for itself. So different results, same search, term, different algorithm. And these things are changing all the time. Do you see something? can't quite show it side by side, but do you see something com comparing comparing Google, Google results, here's Google results, Bing results, see anything different? 
You see any big empty space? Mm -hmm. Google used to have a sidebar of results, which were often paid results. Google doesn't have that anymore. Google now is even more competitive, less of a space for people to show their ads, their content. Bing still has it. You can still pay to rank on the side. Google, I suppose, thought, well, it's too much stuff, too much clutter. Let's simplify it. Bing is saying, well, we want to give more people a chance to possibly be found by taking their money. So is this good or bad? Who knows? But I bet for a lot of people that had paid to be on the sidebar, they're kicking themselves now because now they have to pay more to be on the main bar. Sidebar, main bar. And Google <coughs> eliminated one whole side of the search results. So my company didn't show up anywhere here. I probably, if I go and go and go, maybe we'll be here somewhere on page 90. I don't know. I'm not going to look for it. But this is more about the, the way that people are going to search for your business. Keywords. This is not the only way, as we'll talk about, of course. But in short, what we have to say, one of the big ideas is, for SEO, think in terms of keywords people search for. My company, if I hadn't told you, PMD Interactive, Interactive, do they do video games? I don't know. But as I said, web design, we do web design, we do social media, we do social media marketing, we do X, Y, and Z. Those are the keywords that people would be searching for. So I searched for that keyword. My company didn't show up in either of these results on page one. And this is what I'm saying about the competition. SEO can be or ranking on the search engines can be very difficult depending on your competition. going to take a break in a moment and when we come back we're going to do another kind of search in a moment that is the modern way and then um, we'll see how we can apply this. And I'll give you some handouts and, and all of that. Uh, but here what we're doing is we're seeing the value and the reach of the search engines and, and thinking about the two big ones and um, we need to think about the modern form of marketing search engine optimization, search engine marketing. Um, that's what this class is about. So any general questions before we take our break? Okay, it's 7.47. Let's take a break uh, until 7.57. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 7.57. We'll go on.